when Nimrod died, his wife miraculously gave birth to him as her son. Thus, Nimrod was the father and the son. Uh, the Therefore, son. the Trinity is pagan. I ain't gonna front, y'all. I ain't gonna hold you. That definitely sounds like an episode of Jerry Springer. I ain't gonna front. Father, son? Yo, you are the father. What? How? But I'm me. And you the son? That's crazy. No, that's Maury. My bad. Maury. Really, it can go either way. Maury or Jerry Springer. The father, son. Father, son, Nimrod. That's crazy. My bad, y'all. I just popped in my head. I had to share it. Is the Trinity a pagan deity? You Thanks, won't believe how often I hear it is from Unitarians and Christ mythers. We Christians just believe in a three-headed pagan deity that Jesus didn't teach. The evil bishops added this teaching much later by blending Christianity with paganism. It doesn't reflect what the Bible teaches. Repent and worship the true God, you evil pagan. Of course, they never provide any data that demonstrates Christians stole the Trinity from paganism. Never, never, never. Brother Mike Jones is spitting right here already off the rip, spitting crazy facts right now, man. They never, ever, ever say, yo, this is where I get this from. They never say this is the source. They just say, yo, it's pagan, and this is how. Really, what they want to say is, I know it's pagan because I was on Facebook in 2014 and it came up. Or I was on Reddit, and boom, I seen it, and I was like, ah, got to be true because it's on social media. And then they will provide certain sources, right? And they'll be like, uh, for example, Nimrod or Horus or Mithros, right? But not understand where that actually came from in the actual looking back. Because when you actually, and I'm sure this brother's going to break it down because Mike Jones always comes correct. Um, the time frame of those particular understandings of their deities come after Christianity or just don't have anything really to do. It's kind of like uh, saying, oh, this is apple and orange. Well, just because of both fruit. Ah, they got to be the same thing when I think that's definitely the case when it comes to like horse, because they try to say like, oh, horse is a virgin birth. Uh, no, brother. No, his mama got busy with a dead body. y'all. I don't know if that's really technically a virgin at that point. When you choose just to bounce chicken wow wow with something that's dead, that's kind of gross. I ain't going to front. I ain't got nothing to do with ain't got nothing to do with Mary. Ain't got nothing to do with Mary, but yet they'll say, you know, it's the same thing. Or like the birthday thing. They'll be like, oh, everybody's born on December 25th and yada, yada, yada. We know Jesus wasn't born on December 25th. I think it is that we know that anyway. I'm pretty sure it was at a different time. But anyway, let's get it, Mike Jones. And in this series, we've already shown how the Trinity is taught throughout Scripture. So if Unitarians wish to show the Trinity is really a stolen pagan deity, they do must it. do the obvious. Show do the it. doctrine of the Trinity is specifically taught in pagan literature prior to Christ, and that Christians stole this idea. First, the doctrine of the Trinity is summed up in three points. There is one God, God has three coexisting eternal persons, and each person is fully God. If this doctrine can be shown to be anywhere in paganism, then they might have a case. Now, Trinity pagan theorists do try a number of pagan legends to try and show a connection, which we should examine. For example, conspiracy theorist and Jehovah Witness Robert King will tell you the Trinity is nothing more than the ancient pagan deity of Nimrod and his supposed wife Semiramis. According to himself, since he doesn't give a source, Nimrod and his wife were worshipped as god and goddess. When Nimrod died, his wife miraculously gave birth to him as her son. Thus, Nimrod was the father and the son. Uh, the Therefore, son. the Trinity is pagan. I ain't gonna front, y'all. I ain't gonna hold you. That definitely sounds like an episode of Jerry Springer. I ain't gonna front. Father, son? Yo, you are the father. What? How? But I'm me. And you the son? That's crazy. No, that's Maury. My bad. Maury. Really, it can go either way. Maury or Jerry Springer. The father, son. Father, son, Nimrod. That's crazy. My bad, y'all. I just popped in my head. I had to share it. There, see how easy that was? In fact, that is all the evidence King gives, and then goes on to declare the Trinity came directly from this legend without offering any direct connection. How he makes this leap is beyond me. First, Nimrod, his wife, and himself, as his son, are not one being. They are two separate beings according to this legend. And Nimrod is not three coexisting persons. He is the father and later becomes a son. Which would be heresy if Christians taught this. Yeah, I ain't gonna front. That's modalism right there. That's closer to modalists. That's what they believe. They believe Father, Son, Holy Spirit is one person. But I don't think that they believe that. No, they definitely don't believe that, you know, the Father had the Son in the manner of what they're talking about. But still modalism nonetheless when it comes to that. But they got the two in one. So, nope, not Trinity. Try it again, though. It's about God. This legend, if anything, is more akin to the heresy of modalism which says God is not three coexisting persons, but one person who changes form between the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. 
So this is nothing like the Trinity Doctrine. It would be closer to heresy. The only similarity is in this legend there are three players and there are three persons of the Trinity, which is not much to go on. Mm -mm. With that as the only connection, we might as well say the Three Musketeers came from the legend of Nimrod as well. <laughs> Even worse, King and others who try this theory need to check their facts. This legend of Nimrod isn't even true. There is no scholarly or ancient source which says Semiramis and Nimrod were married. An actual historian, George Rowe, gives us a detailed explanation of who Semiramis was, and it has no connection to any character named Nimrod. Our best information on her comes from Diodorus, who records she married the king of Assyria, Ninus, and went on to restore Babylon. If she did exist, she would have been a queen from around 800 BC, whereas Nimrod was said to have lived 1200 years before that. But the ironic fact is all this comes from Alexander Hislop, who was a Trinitarian. His Nimrod story in his book The Two Babylons was a terrible attempt to attack Catholicism and has been criticized by real historians as not being based on fact. But that doesn't stop Trinity pagan theorists from taking his work of fiction and running wild with it. All they need to do is a bit of actual research and quite mm. frankly try to think. This 19th okay. century fable is nothing like the Trinity, which is pretty obvious, nor can it be traced to a time prior to Christ. Another attempt is to claim the Trinity came from Hinduism. They claim the Trinity is oh, just yeah. a copy of the Hindu Trimutri, which is the belief the Creator God has three forms as Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva. But this is once again a sad attempt without any real thought put into it. The Trimutri was never a real set doctrine in early Hinduism, Ooh. as historian A.L. Basham says. Early Western students of Hinduism were impressed by the parallel between the Hindu trinity and that of Christianity. In fact, the parallel is not very close, and the Hindu trinity, unlike the holy trinity of Christianity, never really caught on. Mm. All Hindu trinitarianism tended to favor one god of the three. Thus, from the context, it is clear that Kalidasa's hymn to the Trimutri is really addressed to Brahma. Here looked on as the high god. The Trimutri was in fact an artificial growth and had little real influence. Plus, dang, so they're just saying it came late to the party. That's what they're saying. That that's not real. That's not OG Hinduism right there. It showed up late to the party. There's like, hey, yo, Jesus, yo, that sounds dope over there. Let's go ahead on and get that. Let's get that for us. And I, even though I didn't bring up Brahma in them, I think this is like one of the things I was talking about earlier on when it comes to people not realizing that things come after the fact. They come after Jesus already came. They came after, you know, Christianity and stuff like that. But people like to get the Reddit posts, the Facebook posts, all that fun stuff. This is what's on there. And they try to think it and, and say that it's fact. But, you know, hey, when you got brothers like Mike Jones that are really into it and really understand and how to get the information, the real information, I appreciate them because it gives it to us. And therefore, that's when I give it to y'all. You know what I'm saying? If you haven't seen it, if you don't know. Well, now you know. We know. We here together. We learning. And thank you to this brother right here, Mike Jones. So, by the way, go follow this brother if you're not. Inspiring philosophy, whether it be on TikTok or YouTube, brother got fire videos. Spitting number facts. Number facts. Notice earlier we said the Trimutri is a belief the Creator can be three forms. Once again, this is not three coexisting eternal persons. It is more akin to the heresy of modalism. The only real similarity is the Trimutri has three forms, and there are three persons of the Trinity. And like we said, the number three is not much to go on. One that might actually have a connection is seen in the followers of Plato. However, it is not what Trinity pagan theorists think. They claim Plato believed in a divine triad of God, the Demiurge, and the world spirit. However, Plato never really harmonized a set doctrine on this. It was later Neoplatonists who taught this, like Plotinus, who came long after Christianity. Dang, that's crazy. I'd be mad for real if I was bald-headed like that and y'all just decided to make my statue like that. Like, nah, bro, you ain't got to make it be bald-headed like me. Give it some hair. Do something. Don't just have me out here looking older than what I probably really am. He might have only been 22 right here, but the hairline pushed all the way back like that. Like, you better give me some hair. Shoot. My, I'm childish. I got to just pay. Plus, there is no the evidence hair. Plato's view of the creator was anything like the triune belief in three eternal persons of one God. The Demiurge was said to create the world, but he was also created, finite, not omniscient, omnipotent, and only semi-divine. Mm. In fact, this doesn't fit with the Trinity, but is more like the ancient heresy of Arianism, or modern-day Jehovah Witnesses, mm. which believe Jesus is only semi-divine and a created being. The only real connection is, once again, the number three. 
If there is any connection between what Plato believed and later Christians, it may be the other way around. That is, biblical theology influenced Plato. Early historians like Eusebius and philosophers like Justin Martyr argued Plato was influenced by the teachings of Moses. So if there is any real connection, it could be the other way around, and biblical theology influenced Plato. Still, even if that is the case, Plato came to a view of God that Orthodox Christians would have considered heretical if applied to Christ. Because of that, you can't say the Trinity came from Plato's theology, since the most similar thing was dubbed as heresy later on. But don't worry, there are plenty of more parallels to try. My favorite supposed connection comes from David C. Pack. He tries much of the same nonsense Robert King tries, but tries to tell us that Semiramis and Nimrod, who he boldly says is also called the Assyrian King Ninus, escaped to Egypt, where they were worshipped as gods Osiris and Isis. Then Osiris died and was born again as Horus through Isis. Therefore, the Trinity is pagan. Of course, Pack won't tell you that his research isn't based on a real scholarship, but on the same 18th century fables King uses. Mm. I also can't find any real historians who say Osiris and Isis were Nimrod and Semiramis, nor can I find any historians who claim Nimrod was another name for Assyrian King Ninus, or that Osiris was reborn as Horus. Pack is just making up connections and facts to suit his needs. It is embarrassing to watch him attempt to do history. But let's forget all of that for a second, and assume he is not just making things up. So what? The only connection between these three and the Trinity is the number three, Dang. which is not an argument to go on. Mm -hmm. As you can see, a pattern is starting to emerge among Trinity pagan theorists. Right, that's like saying, man, now, you're going to have people nowadays, right, that grew up in the 90s. They're going to be like, yo, Ed and Eddie, got to be a Trinity. Why? Because there's three of them. They got to be a Trinity. That's what it's going to come down to. People just love to just make stuff out of nothing because of just numbers and everything like that. The reach, the Mr. Fantastic reach that these people have to have to put these things together. Like, come on, man. Especially if it's true, which there's no reason to see that it's not. And, you know, if you guys want to go ahead and look into all the things that he's looking into. But if it's true about this, uh, the brothers that he was talking about, that they got it from this particular book and that they're just piecing things together and make stuff up. <laughs> man, the, the depths you got to go to. But that's what Satan to do. Satan to create these depths and then for the people who don't want to learn and the people who don't want to actually look into them they'll believe it he ain't got no new tricks man he's been doing this for a long time and that's all that is is just taking all these things and say ah see this can't be true this can't make sense this can't do any of this yada 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 and Alex Wiley, all it's doing is just taking people away from the truth unfortunately because people are lazy and they don't want to look into it and they don't want to find out so yeah man ed and eddie ain't no trinity these things ain't no trinity just because there's three don't mean nothing and the pattern is just the number three. Virtually all ancient religions possessed triad deities. Yes, you can find plenty of pagan deities coming in threes, as well as fours and twos. If all Trinity pagan theorists are doing is skimming through pagan literature and 19th century fiction to find any set of threes and then triumphantly claiming that is where the Trinity comes from, then they are really not even trying, but starting with the conclusion and finding whatever they need to prove it. If you want to know where the Trinity comes from, why not read the actual writings of the early church? Long before Constantine, writers like Tertullian, Origen, and Clement of Alexandria defended the doctrine of the Trinity. Prior to the use of the term, writers very close to the apostles like Ignatius, a student of John, taught Jesus was eternally begotten before time began. Mm. And what do these writers quote to support this sacred doctrine? Nothing other than scripture. Mm. They don't pull from paganism. The idea they read pagan ideas into scripture is not a scholarly argument or supported by evidence. A little more is needed than finding three deities together and drawing a conclusion. But the irony of all of this is really what is interesting. All these supposed parallels are nothing like the Trinity. In fact, they are more like the religions the Trinity pagan theorists come from. For example, Robert King is a Jehovah Witness, who believes Jesus is a created God who is to be worshipped. You know who also believes in created gods? Pagans! Plato's view and many other ancient religions believed in created deities who formed the world. So clearly, Jehovah Witnesses stole their beliefs from pagans. Dang. David C. Pack believes scripture teaches the Father and Son are separate gods. Do you know who also believed in separate gods? Pagans! Therefore, it is obvious this was stolen from paganism. That's Modern modalists, That's such as Oneness Pentecostals, believe the three persons of God are just three forms of one God, just like Hindu pagans. So that must be where they got their theology from. All these supposed Trinitarian parallels yeah, yeah. actually resemble the theology of these groups who espouse the connections. 
not the trinity of Orthodox Christianity. Ooh. No pagans that we know of ever worshipped one god as three coexisting eternal persons. They talk of created gods and gods taking on different forms, which all these anti-Trinitarian groups hold to. Ooh. So the irony of their theories is astounding. Yo, he's basically saying right now. He's saying right now ain't no fun when the rabbit got the gun when you really look into it. When you really look into it, the beliefs that the people have, when these people say, oh, pagan, pagan, the people that love throwing the pagan world around, man, the, the modalists, man, the oneness folk, j Dubs, Unitarians love throwing that pagan stuff around. They love it. Muslims love throwing that pagan stuff around. But yet, nah, it's really their beliefs that are more akin to that of pagans. I actually did a video not too long ago about Muslims and their beliefs on paganism and where a lot of their things could have came from. Whether that's true or not, ah, let the scholars decide. I really just did it to be petty. But same thing for these uh, Unitarians that are in my comments to this day. I just had a unit. But in fact, real quick, side note, I had a Unitarian, right? In my comments, say that the, the Trinity changed up from the Old Testament to the New Testament. This is what he said now. You can look it up. Uh, he said that the Trinity in the Old Testament was the Father, or the Most High, excuse me, the Angel of the Lord, and the Holy Spirit. That was the Trinity in the Old Testament. And then he said the Trinity in the New Testament was the Most High, the Son, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. Blew my mind. Blew my mind that he thinks that they're two different trinities. But y'all go ahead, y'all tell him. I'll let you know what video it's on too. It's on this video. Go tell it's in the comments. Go go and go tell him. Go tell him. Go tell them, y'all. Instead of showing the Trinity as identical to pagan religions, they only show their beliefs are more akin to paganism. So the next time some Mormon, Jehovah Witness, modalist, or any other heretical group tries to claim the Trinity is based off of paganism, just ask them, where is the specific doctrine in paganism? And rightly ask why their beliefs resemble paganism far more. Mm. I'm sure it will make for interesting conversation, and hopefully point out the ignorance of their association fallacy. Let's get it. That was cold. Man, so that was Mike Jones showing that ah, the Trinity's not pagan. It never was pagan, can't be pagan. But yet, the people that like to throw the pagan claims around are way more akin to paganism than the Trinity is. Why? Because that's what God revealed Himself to be from the Old Testament to the New Testament: Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Triune God. Everywhere in the pages, man, it's there. It's there. The truth. And once you come to learn the truth, it'll set you free. I was watching a debate, man, with uh, Dr. James White and Dr. Michael Brown because he's two Unitarians, right? And as I was watching it. Dr. James White says something so amazing. He said, Unitarians read the Bible with one eye open. That means the other one's closed. And that's the, that's the fact of the matter. They read the Bible and only see a portion of what's going on. The Holy Spirit ain't really entering them yet, but they will also be the quickest ones. Them and modalists, oneness. They'll be the quickest ones to say, ah, man, you ain't got the Holy Spirit. That's the carnal thinking. Man, that's crazy. 2,000 years of church history was wrong because of your nonsense. Anyway. That was Mike Jones, Inspiring Philosophy. If you ain't following him, go follow him. If you made it to this point, you want to follow your boy, go ahead and follow me. I do reaction videos here all the time just to show people where they can get some better information, some more information. I do interviews with people in the faith, and that's a blessing right there. It's a beautiful thing. So if you want to follow your boy, go ahead and follow your boy. If not, that's cool too. But I will catch y'all next time. I'm out.